So Rob, I'm just gonna give you kind of a little crash course here on PV. A lot of people really don't know how this stuff works and there's a lot of misconceptions out there about how it works. So uh, I'm just gonna kind of give you um, kind of a little breakdown. Let's say that we've got four panels on your roof. Now, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, a great artist, so kind of bear with me here as I get through this. So essentially, Rob, if you put four panels on the roof, every single one of these panels is gonna be producing 390 watts of electricity per hour. So every single hour that the sun is out on the roof, these panels will produce 350 watts per hour. And that's what's cool about PV. It's not about savings, it's about production, right? It's science. Guaranteed if the sun is out and it's hitting this panel, it will produce 390 watts of electricity. It's not like say putting insulation and will save you this much on your air conditioning costs or you know, this water, you know, uh, uh, these light bulbs will save you a little bit of money on your power bill. This is actually producing the power itself. Makes sense, there's a difference there. So it does. each one of these panels is 390 watts per hour. Now, how many hours of sun do you think that you will get on your roof every single day, Rob? like eight or nine eight or nine that's what most people tell me but you know with the cloud coverage um rain you know all that kind of stuff you have the winter solstice summer solstice uh we do it based on what's called max pro or maximum production okay. we don't want to do this stuff on maybe right we don't want to do it on the best day of the year right we want to do this on how it's going to work day in day out and the minimums of what you're going to get that's what we call maximum production that's when the sun is directly hitting the panels okay and you're going to do that for six hours a day so let's go ahead and do the math here if you've got um three 390 watt panels right times four panels that's 1,560 watts of electricity, right? Right. Another way of looking at this, right? 1,560 watts. Another way of looking at this is 1.56 kilowatts, right? And that's how you get charged at the power company, right? Per kilowatt, that's 1,000 watts being used, okay? So if we do this 1.56, kilowatt hours times six hours per day, one point five six times six hours per day, we're producing nine point three six kilowatt hours per day. You follow me here, Rob? Definitely. Perfect. Now how many days are there in a month? Thirty? Thirty one? 30.4 30. 30. 30. on 30. average, 4. right? Yeah, 30.4. So we go 9.36 kilowatt hours that these four panels are producing per day times 30.4 days in a month. You're looking at producing 9.36 per day times 30.4 days you end up with 284 kilowatt hours. You follow me still? Yes, I am. Now, a lot of solar companies out there will tell you that you're gonna send all this power into your home. It's simply not true, right? You're always going to have a certain degree of loss. Now, how much loss you have is how you set this system up. The old way of doing solar is what they call string inverters, okay? That means you take all these panels, you hook them all up on a line, and then you run this to a big DC to AC converter because solar power is like battery power. It's direct current, DC power, right? So you have to convert that to alternating current, the type of power that we use for our homes. Make sense? And then that is sent into the home. Well, the reason they don't, well, I guess there's a lot of companies out there, Rob, that still use this kind of stuff. But the reason that you shouldn't is because of the amount of loss that's involved, okay? So with DC power, battery power, you have what's called line loss. That's why, you know, Nikolai Tesla beat Edison, you know, in the, in the electricity race, because alternating current is tremendously more efficient. You can run it for a thousand miles and you have less than a 1% loss ratio. On DC power, if you run it for a thousand yards, you lose it all. 
right? By the time you get to the other end, you've lost all that power. So the longer you have to run this power on a line, the higher your loss ratios are. You follow me here? Um, it's a little different on every house, depending on how far you have to run this stuff to their actual box, right? And to their DC to AC converter. Um, also, it's almost like a string of Christmas lights. You remember the old Christmas lights before they were LED? You pull one out, it kills the rest of the string. It's the same thing with these panels. If one panel is not working, or you have uh, some, some shade or something like that on one panel, right? Every panel beyond that is not gonna work. You follow me? Because you're killing that string, right? But the biggest thing that I hate about string inverters, Rob, um, and this is why you know anybody new in the business doesn't even use these anymore. The biggest problem with this is you can't do troubleshooting. You can't see where the problems are. So if you have a problem, you literally would have to go up there and check each panel and every connection and every optimizer individually. It takes forever. There, there's no you know, way of seeing where the problems are easily, right? So by doing it this way, all of those different variables, you only end up sending 74% of the electricity into your house, right? The new way of doing solar today is with microinverters. You have an inverter that's attached to every single panel. This does a lot of things for you. Number one, every panel operates individually from every other panel, right? That's a good thing, right? Also, you completely eliminate line loss because by the time this power leaves the panel, it's already alternating current. You are converting the power at the point of production rather than doing it later. Does that make sense? Makes and also, the more power you convert at once, the higher your loss ratios are. So it only makes sense to convert a little bit at a time, which is what you're doing here. Now, the best thing about microinversion systems, especially um, uh, in phase, is the reporting and the troubleshooting. You can go on an app on your phone or on your computer at any time during the day. You can see what panel one did, what panel 10 did, what panel 18 did, what panel 40 did. I don't know if you're putting 40 of them up there, Rob, but <laughs> some people do. Um, you can see what every single panel is doing. You can see what it did today. You can see what it did this hour. You can see what it did this week, this month, the whole year. You can go up there, you can see if one panel has a problem. One panel's production is lower than another. You can see everything. Right? And there's something about that kind of transparency that just makes me feel great. You know, I want to be able to see it. I want to be able to see that this panel produced, oh my goodness, it's over its production today. You know, this panel's doing better than it's even supposed to, right? Because of the amount of sun that happened, it happened to get that day. You know what I mean? Um, but through doing it this way, instead of sending 74% of the power into your home, you completely eliminate this box and you're literally just hardwiring everything directly into the home. That gives you a 95% yield instead of 74. That's a big difference. You're sending 20% more of the power into your house, okay? So on 284 kilowatt hours times 95%, we're gonna be looking at 270 kilowatt hours after conversion, right? 270 after conversion. Follow me here? Absolutely. How much do you get charged per kilowatt hour at the power company? Do you know? 16 cents. What are we cents. under here, Tico? 16 cents. Uh, I think it's a little bit less at Tico. I think you're around 15. Duke, where are they? You're on Duke. Duke is 17. Okay. Um, but Tico, if you're under Tampa Electric, go ahead and crunch one of your bills whenever you get there. All you got to do is take the total I'm bill. Under LCEC. Okay, well, whatever power company you're under, right. you can just take one of their bills, however the amount is, divided by the kilowatt hours. That's your cost per kilowatt. It's real simple. Tico um, just well, went total up. Total bill. Tico just went up. Tico went up in April 10%. They're at 16 Oh, now. okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes All sense. All the customers out here, right. you'll, you'll hit them. They're like, yeah, we just got the notice last we month. We just got the increase. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so time, 16 cents a kilowatt hour. That would be $43. So time, 16 cents per kilowatt hour. Equals... $43, right? Rob, I try to make this real simple. Every four panels equals $40 a month. Or guess what? 
10 bucks. A Every panel does 10. You're not even going to have to say it. Oh, okay. They're going to say it for you, just like you did. Okay, gotcha. They know <clears throat> four panels, 40 bucks. Oh, so it's 10 bucks a panel. Yes, that's the response I'm attempting to elicit. Follow me when I get down to the bottom here. So that means every four panels equals $40. Or Rob, <laughs> every panel's 10 bucks a month. They should say it before I say it. Okay. You follow me? So let's see how many you need. You've got a $200 power bill. Yes. Are you recording now? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah I'm just tracking. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see how many you need. Rob, you have a $200 power bill. There's $30 of this bill that you can never get away from through your um, taxes, fees, your zap cap, customer charge, right? For being attached to the grid, right? And for having <laughs> them net zero meter your power, um, which we'll talk about in a second, you're gonna lose 30 bucks. So you need $170 worth of power. Divide that by 10 bucks, you need 17 panels. Now, I always try to do a panel or two more on this one. I'd probably do 18 panels. Because 18 panels not only is going to engineer better, right? You can do three rows of six, you can do two rows of nine, right? Um, but you also would rather do a little bit extra than a little bit less. And since they're already up there, let's go ahead and make it right. So I would do 18 panels on this project just to guarantee it. So that's 18 panels, 390 watts per panel. You're looking at a 7,000 watt photovoltaic system. That's what you need for this house. Make sense? Um, we charge normally. This is well. This is when I'll go into my model home pricing, right? And it shows on there six dollars, and then I'll do all that, and then I'll drop it to four seventy-five, right? But uh, just for your own benefit, you're going to end up at thirty-three thousand three hundred forty-five dollars, right? So for eighteen panels, thirty-three grand. This these payment structures are different than what you've been learning on conservation where you get 18 months, no payments. After the 18 months, it's a 1% payment factor, 5.9 APR, could be a little bit better depending on their credit. So this is not like that? It's not like that. These payments start 30 to 45 days after the install is complete, and it's gonna take 90 days to install it, 60 to 90 days. That's how long it takes to get permits, right? It's not us. Okay. We can install it tomorrow. Right. And we sure wish they'd let us, <laughs> but they won't. So we have to do site-specific engineering instructions. We have to get FSEC approval, Florida Solar Energy Center. Once we have all that stuff back, then we can actually go out there and do the install. Then they inspect it. Once they inspect it, then we do an interconnect agreement with the power company. Power company then comes out, takes out their old meter, hooks up a bi-directional meter that's gonna measure the electricity both ways, right? We're not allowed to hook our own system to the grid. Would this be something that you would sell somebody say they had a 250 300 dollars electric bill mm -hmm. but yeah everything you've looked at is good absolutely you get they're using a lot of power you? yeah uh, on so if the house goes. if the house is efficient and the bills are that st still that high it's a big house right. right now each of these panels are 20 square feet so you have to make sure that you have enough room you know okay. to put these panels up there okay. you follow me um, so thirty three thousand. Thirty three thousand three forty five. That's seven thousand yep. times four seventy five. Nope. Yeah, eighteen panels first. So oh, eighteen. Yeah, eighteen panels mm -hmm. times three hundred and ninety watts per panel is seven thousand. Mm -hmm. So it's 20. a seven thousand watt system. You're going to be okay. producing seven thousand watts what per hour. Right. Yeah, per hour with this panel with these wow. panels. Yeah. So now thirty forty thousand watts a day. Is it? Yes, set up to that's go what back? I'm saying. Yeah. So during the day, yeah, once you hook up that bi-directional meter, during the day, your meter runs backwards. Okay. You're, you're not going to be able to use 30, 40, 50,000 sure. no, watts I, of electricity in your home I'm during saying. that, you know, six, seven hours, right? Um, then when you get home at night, you know, you're not producing any solar power, very it's little. It starts going forward. At the end of the month, you find out who owes who. Did I send them more power during the day right. or did they send me more power at night? Gotcha. That's why they call it net zero metering. And so do they send you, like say, do they send or do they just credit? It's a one to one. It's a credit. Yeah, you, a credit. if you end up overproducing, which you don't really want to overproduce because you get ripped off, right? So um, if you're overproducing power, you have to overproduce it for a whole year for it to matter. Because right? okay. anything, <laughs> Yeah, let's say that you did, you, you sent them 100 kilowatt hours this month, they're just gonna give you credit on your bill for next month. Oh, okay. You see what I mean? Uh, if you do that for an entire year, at the end of the year, they cut a check. Makes sense? Oh, okay. You got it. Well, if you're so, positive every month, then yeah. you're gonna get it. So 7,000 watts, guys, I did 475 per watt 
that's where you get the 33,345. We're gonna start at $6 a watt, and then we're gonna to go to uh, 475. Yes, yeah, this is kind of the sweet spot to where all the numbers are gonna work out too, right? Because look, on 33,000 bucks, your payment on this is a half a percent payment factor. Okay, so times 0 0.005, you're looking at a payment being $166.72. So $167 per month at 4.9% interest, okay? They're saving how much? 170. 170 on their bills. They're profiting $3 a month and doing all the upgrades for free. Sir, do you think that profiting $3 a month would create a financial <laughs> hardship on you and your family? <clears throat> Probably not, right? All I need to get started on the program is a driver's license. It takes about 10 minutes to write this stuff up. Is that how you do it? No. 